Professor von Kolani, first, I'm quite delighted that and, and honored, actually, that you have agreed to be interviewed uh, uh, in this interview series. Uh, as you know, there are several scholars uh, who are being interviewed, all of whom have published some very important works uh, and are between there are some who are senior scholars and there are some who are junior scholars, but all of whom have either published many works in the past or, or who are beginning to publish some significant works in the field of China Christianity studies. And uh, of course, we are particularly honored to have you uh, interviewed, largely because so much of your work has, has helped us to better understand, well, mostly the Jesuit mission, your work with Joachim Bouvet. Uh, I know you have a great interest in Adam Chalvan Bell. And, uh, and also, uh, we have become very aware of your collaboration with Professor Paul Rule with, uh, on, in translating the Acta Pecanincia. And uh, I know I recently heard that Oxford University had a, 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 a celebration honoring uh, your work and uh, Dr. Rule's work with the Acta Pecanensia. But I should say, just by way of introduction, um, and I want to keep my remarks brief because we really want to hear from you, but by way of introduction, so many of us uh, keep your books very close to our elbow in our office. And we have all uh, relied upon you for how we think about the, especially the Catholic mission in China through mostly the Qing dynasty. But uh, with that, let's, let's move to the first question. Professor Von Kolani, uh, really, uh, we'd like to know what brought you to the field of China Christianity studies. And perhaps if you could add to that, what has attracted you to the particular areas about which you've researched? Oh, that's a bit strange. Um, I had started to study theology here in Würzburg, Catholic theology, and at the same time, uh, Sinology and Japanology, because I was interested in the Far East. I came from the martial arts, and so I wanted to know more about the Far East. And then I heard that there was a professor in missiology who had been in uh, Japan and who had uh, studied Sinology at Columbia's in USA. And so I I went to him because it, missiology is not part of the normal curriculum of theology. It, it's a special field. And so I came to Professor Willeke. Perhaps you know his name. He, he wrote a book on uh, uh, the last years of the Qing dynasty and, and uh, persecutions and so on. Still a good book. And so I went to him and, and uh, wrote my uh, diploma thesis. So I had to finish my theology with diploma and we thought about the subject and there was another uh, PhD student of his, uh, Sebald Reil. And uh, he had written a book on Kilian Stumpf. He was working on his dissertation. And so he told Provilike, why she could do a work uh, uh, on Kilian Stumpf and Bouvet. And Kilian Stumpf had written a uh, small letter against uh, the figurist contra sententias kinisticas. And so I translated this Latin uh, letter and I had of a transcription, translation and annotations, introduction. And so I was so fascinated about the subject, the French Jesuits at the court of, of Kangxi Emperor and uh, the Jesuits in China and so on. And, and I started to work on this field. And so I continued with my um, dissertations then on Bouvet. And I ordered uh, manuscripts and uh, I mostly worked with um, microfilms because I had children and so I had to work at home. And so it was a fascinating subject and I continued to work about it. And still, uh, Kilian Stumpf and Bouvet are still accompanying me. So the Stumpf's rationalists, uh, technicians, uh, uh, made uh, built a glass house in Beijing and Bouvet with his fantastic visions about uh, Overall, overall um, uh, meeting of, of east and west of of, of ideas from the uh, uh, from China, from Song Dynasty, and uh, European rena Renaissance. And so, this this field is still uh, fascinating. At the one hand, church history of China, and the other hand, history of ideas. And so, I continue this path. One of the um, 
one of the things that scholars uh, have said about your work is that uh, you, you, you seem to bridge two different disciplines. One is the discipline of theology, and the other is the discipline of, of history, of church history. And when I think about uh, uh, Stumpf, we all think about his act of pecanencia, his comments on the rights controversy and the, the Trenon embassy legation. And then we also think about Bouvet and his figurism. And one is, you know, Stumpf is largely speaking of history, and, and Bouvet is largely speaking of this intellectual tradition, this figurism. Um, and you're, you're both. And the next question then really is, is focused on uh, uh, if you've ever had a particular discovery. And theologians often say, we don't make discoveries, we add new layers of understanding. Historians often talk about the eureka moments where they discover something. But I guess I would ask you, Professor von Kolani, has there ever been a moment in your research where you've learned something that has changed how you think about your topic? Not really. I, I only make the experience, making the experience that my uh, understanding of uh, things is becoming deeper and deeper and wider at the same time. And you see, I'm very interested in the Far East, but at the same time, we have the history in Europe here. In Germany, we had our German, uh, German emperors. And so I come to, um, to compare the Chinese and the German emperors and the German history is a French history, European uh, history to compare it with China and to, to see the, the meeting points of both of them and, and how they learned from each other and, and uh, how it was possible to work together and to learn from each other. And so you now it's no real, not, not just a sudden uh, event and not, nothing sudden, it's but just uh, coming peu a peu. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, that's a very good answer. I mean, it's a very, it's a very straightforward answer. Well, you know, the next question then, and, and, and um, you know, I think I'm thinking now of Confucius who said, in your thoughts, don't go astray. Um, he said to avoid tangents. I may have a, a couple of a extra questions at the very end, um, but but uh, in in research, some of us spend most of our times in archives in our office, and some of us travel abroad. Um, one question that people wanted to ask of you is if you've ever had a particularly um, meaningful moment during research, either in Europe or in 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 perhaps in Asia. Mm. No, no, not I sometimes I found very interesting manuscripts, but mostly I'm working at home, not, not in archives. Sometimes in archives, yes, and it was in Chantilly when it was still existent, and I met Father de Hermes there. That was very important. And uh, but it's not uh, it's it's a process also. The only process, not not a certain point. It's a process and it's going on and still going on. Yes. <laughs> well um so, so then um, we also, we're asking everyone about their own research, and uh, I have some other questions for you. But then we're also asking everyone to speak of another scholar, an, or, or more than another scholar, perhaps several. Um, if you have any particular important memories of other scholars in our field about which you think that we should remember. As I already uh, mentioned, Father de Harnier, uh, who was the archivist of the French uh, archives in Chantilly, and it was a very important and very helpful man. And you know, everybody who came to uh, met him and wanted to do research on the Jesuits, he was very delighted. And somebody who worked on Jesuits in China was much more delighted. And if somebody worked on French Jesuits in China, he was he would give his uh, would everything. And uh, he was very encouraging and very, very kind of helpful, and that brought uh, manuscripts and, and helped me much. And so I, I regret very much that he uh, passed away. And then other, another important uh, person was, uh, was uh, Knut Lundbeck. Mm. Perhaps you know his name. Yes, he came course. from the medicine, he was a physician for diabetes mellitus. And he thought, yes, after my retirement, I will do something interesting, more interesting than diabetes mellitus. And then he came to the, uh, China history, and that was also very uh, helpful for me to do. Uh, we wrote long letters to each other and uh, exchanged our research and knowledge, and so 
it was a good meeting all this and then father malek fundamental theoretica and he encouraged he uh, told me claudia you should do research um, it's, uh, not so much teaching but research is better for you and, and continues his path and uh, do those things and so i i did so I, I had a special situation i didn't get any um appointment at the university only for some time as an assistant professor for some years and then i had my family my husband was also very uh, busy in research he was a stochastics and sometimes our research met each other so the probability was one point that our interests met the probability in theology and in mathematics and uh, so we, we did sometimes we, we, together something uh, we had a, our internet encyclopedia and so on and uh, but he passed away three years ago so uh, yes he had pro problems with his he couldn't continue his research then and uh, was very ill but i mostly worked at home i had children i had family and so i had to fight for the time to do the research and i didn't travel much yes for conferences and sometimes to archives but not too often mm -hmm. so it's a special situation here you certainly um one thing i hear often about your work is that there's a lot of it so you've certainly um been successful and have contributed a great deal you mentioned F father malek malek yeah. Yeah. i wonder if you have a, a comment because he recently passed away yeah you know he was working at monumenta serica and many of us have so much admiration not only for your work but for his 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 um contribution to the field might you have a description of what he was like. Malek, he was like a, a locomotive. He was very strong and he went very, uh, he went very, very strong. So people had to follow him. He was also a born leader, but he worked too much. That's a problem. Sometimes people are overestimate their power and their health and they pay for it very expensively. Mm -hmm. So yes, yes, he was uh, somebody who brought people to follow him and to, to do something and, and uh, to go straight forward. I heard once that he was a chain smoker. Is, was that true of him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He smoked too much, yes. It's not good yeah. for health. <laughs> That's I, we all know it. You know. He worked too much during the nights and he drank too much coffee and then smoked it was I think at breakfast was uh, coffee and, and a cigarette or something like that. Oh goodness. <laughs> well, you know, uh, there's a Jesuit, uh, Francis Rouleau, who was also yeah. a chain smoker and oh. but he tried to hide it from everyone. <laughs> oh, no, Malik didn't hide it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knew. <laughs> Uh, Professor von Coloni, let me ask you another question because we've interviewed uh, scholars from, well, we interviewed scholars from the UK. We, of course, we just interviewed uh, a Paul Rule who was in Melbourne. Uh, we'll be uh, interviewing some from, from, from Western Europe. Uh, one of the things that is, um, we always like to sort of think about, and that is uh, there is a kind of, um, how do I say, almost a stereotype that we here in the United States have a different way of conducting scholarship uh, than in Western Europe and even the UK. I wonder if you might comment in your own life as a scholar in, in there in Western Europe, how has, how have you, what, what have your thoughts been about the scholars, for example, in the United States or how, how, how have you compared the two types, the two ways of conducting scholarship? Uh. I have the impression, but uh, the only impression uh, is that American scholars like to do have a huge, uh, a huge overview of a, of a special field. But in Europe, you like to have very. We go into the the depths. That's, that's the, 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 yeah. So the whole world, the globe, and the, we are going into small pieces into the uh, yeah depths. That's a very apt description. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's, of course, it's, uh, that's not true in every respect, but uh, I have that impression. Right, right. Well, uh, l let me then ask you um, just a bit about what you, what your hopes might be for the, the field. Um, 
what uh, do you, what would you like to see happen in the future of the field of China Christianity studies? Uh, I, it's very good that now we have many good young scholars, uh, both in the West and in China, and they work on special uh, fields, but we should really go to the uh, roots, to the texts it's themselves, to have more publications of the text. That's with Paul and, and I, we, we are working together with Acta Pekinensia, and that's very, a good collaboration, and uh, Paul is a very fine scholar, so uh, that's important. But it's not really, um, as it's estimated, but it's not, uh, what to say, sometimes my words are lacking. Um, you see, in the academic uh, career, it's important to write uh, articles and books, but not so much work with translations and texts. It's not really honored, at least here in Germany. We have, uh, if people apply for a, a position, then there are many uh, things important, but uh, not, uh, not so much the, the publications. That's, that's a pity. Mm -hmm. Elsewhere, there are more the accounting publications that what they do, but not in Germany. It's, yes, you should have some, but it's not literally important. Mm -hmm. And so I would wish that uh, the, it is more honored to have uh, texts uh, uh, compared or texts published and translated and so on, and uh, that would be good. Well, I don't and, know about uh, Germany, but here, uh, if, if you publish a monograph, uh, that counts quite a lot for receiving tenure, but translation is never... It has, yeah, it's not really honored, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It is not honored. And I think translation is one of the most important things we can yeah. do as well. Yeah. That's, that's everywhere the same. Yes, translation is not really... Uh, yeah, you see, Paul and I are doing mostly the annotations to the Acta Pekinensia and the introduction to the text. It's much time. You can't imagine the, the annotations. What do they mean? And there are things uh, of that time. Uh, that in a, bit, a little illusion is enough, but we don't know the background, so we have to go to the European history, to the theology, history of theology, to books, to old books. And it's now very helpful that we can download the old books and, and it's work mm -hmm. with them. It's, it's really very good. And we can work uh, by internet, by online, with emails and so on. And that's also very helpful for research. We can work from different countries and uh, together. It's, mm -hmm. In former times, it was nice to go to the post office and to mail something that took a long time and, and so on. Now it's, it's much easier. Mm -hmm. And we should enjoy that and, and uh, work more <laughs> and better. So how, how has... The, the, the Act of Pecanencia will have a total of four volumes, correct? Yeah, yeah, we think so, yes. And uh, how close are you to being finished? Uh, now it depends on uh, uh, somebody in San Francisco is working with, with volume three. We are ready. We, we are. We did our task, Paul and me. But he's will overlook the, the, the you see the redactional. Redact, redact, well, I don't uh, work, <laughs> if everything is clear and so on for people who are not in the field directly in the field. And then we also started with volume four. We have several working for several months, some months, and so I should. I don't know, no idea how fast uh, the others are working, or how fast we can work, and there are sometimes uh, obstacles and so on. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a problem with the coronavirus, and sometimes oh. we are ill or whatever. Mm -hmm. What has the process been like working with Professor Rule? I know that uh, he he mentioned that he feels. Uh, uh, more adept at working with Latin um, than Chinese. How, how have you how have you divided your labors? How how have you divided your work with the Acta Pecanensia? As I have confessed, I'm, I'm no native speaker, so Paul is uh, um, so one who is uh, who is doing the the, the, well, the the languages, and then he starts with the uh, annotations, and I continue with annotations. It, it's not really fixed, so we have some, some uh, people know that and other, I know other things, and I'm from Europe, I have the English or European history, European theology, but Paul has, it's more the Chinese uh, uh, places and, and so on and so on. But sometimes I have, I have also worked with about Franciscans in China, and there are special uh, 
other things which they have. And, and I, I, what I really regret is that the Seneca Franciscana was stopped. It's, it's another field. Important. It would be important to continue, but they don't have people. That's something of depending on costs and money. Right, right. So and all the on the islands, a good situation that we can work on these fields and we are more or less retired and that's a good situation to work. Mm -hmm. well, let me ask you, what, what are your next projects? I know you're, in, I think you're working again on your, your Bouvet and Adam Chauvin Bell. What projects do you look forward to working on in the future? Uh, at the moment, I'm still working with the text of my habilitation that's on Bouvet and his Tienchue Benyi. Mm. And uh, it's with Monumenta Serica, and they told me to, I should add several things about theology. I thought I should only publish the t more or less text translations or so on. But uh, they so I think that uh, people will need a theological introduction. So mo people who are reading Monumenta Serica are normally no theologians. And so I, I added some pieces on theology and so on, and then made many annotation it was a time of corona now right. and then i will uh, work, continue to work on bouvet and uh, more figurism which i neglected a bit and then uh, i will see perhaps his letters and so on and there are many things and stumpf also he has uh, other manuscripts on rights controversy which would be important to publish them no idea uh, yeah, or what? Migro. I would also like to do work on Migro. On Charles oh. Migro. Oh. Yeah, he, he left m huge manuscripts on the Chinese religions and philosophy, and his uh, view of China is also very interesting. He was, a, of course, he was not, didn't think that Chinese have a good religion, so that we should erase everything. But on the other hand, he was very systematical and, and he's interesting, yes. Mm -hmm. One thing I, I think people have would like me to ask you, uh, and we just uh, maybe this would be one of the last questions. But one of the things people would like me to ask you, when you think about Joachim Bouvet and his his way of thinking about the aging, uh, as someone who is uh, well trained in theology, um, what is your personal impression or your personal opinion on Bouvet's? interpretation of the I Ching as being this lost work of Enoch or something? Oh, that's a difficult question. You know, my Chinese is not very good. Uh, Bouvet left many uh, Chinese manuscripts and I cannot read them, but uh, young scholars are working on them now. But uh, his interpretation of the I Ching is, uh, of course, uh, he thought it, uh, the I Ching was a uh, lost book of Hanok. Mm -hmm. And so he has, it has uh, the revelations given to, from God to the patriarch Yenok. And, uh, but I have no, I would like to go into tips. I, I, I have until now only met parts of it. And you see the, the Chen Chipini is not figurism. It's written by Bouvet, but it's, it's a classical accommodation uh, attitude of the Jesuits. And uh, at the same time, when he worked with this, um, uh, Project Bouvet also started with the uh, figurism with his uh, disciples and so on. And uh, I, I should go and, and read more about also from uh, written by Prima or Fouquet mm -hmm. on the Ching. And I also would like to continue, of course, the Tao Te Ching project. Mm -hmm. I forgot to tell. Oh, um, no, what is this? Can you describe that? Tao Te Ching project uh, says. There were several translations in the, uh, by the Jesuits, and uh, most of them are lost. The one survived, that's uh, by Jean Francois Noëlla. Mm. He was a, uh, well, a kind of student of Fouquet, and he translated the whole Dao de Ching, but uh, not one starting from one to the end, but the most important theological parts, and then he continued with the rest. And he made a very interesting um, interpretation of, uh, with, with the help of scholastic of the Tao Te Ching, of, of, of course, of Trinity and so on and so on. And we had here a little project in Germany, but we uh, 
had all the, only a little booklet and then one of us died and so we couldn't continue and it should also be translated into English. Mm -hmm. It would be important. I think it's Latin now and we had made a German translation with annotations, but we should continue into English so that more people can read it. Right, right. So yeah, I have enough projects, you see. No, it's, you, it's, it's beautiful. So it's fascinating, still fascinating. Yeah. Um, well, I, I guess I should maybe one final question, and that is, uh, Professor, Professor von Coloni, how is the state of, here in the United States, the field of China Christianity studies is expanding very quickly uh, with many, many book series beginning to publish works on Christianity in China. And I know it's becoming more difficult in mainland China to do this research. Um, in, in your native Germany, what, what is the state of the field? Oh, that's, that's a pity. It's very poor. You see, missiology is there are only two um, Catholic um, uh, chairs in, in Germany, one in Münster, one in Würzburg, and said in Würzburg is not sure if it will survive and so on. And so uh, there are no, no, no young people. It's imp there are no jobs for them and there are no research po uh, possibilities and so on. And so I'm more or less, I'm more or less alone in the field at the moment. Perhaps somebody can join me, but I'm not sure. It's, uh, yes, it would be important. It's, uh, it's much to do, still much to do, but no idea. Well, um, well, one good thing is, as you mentioned earlier, we have email and <laughs> we, we have more increasingly, it, it's, be, it's become a, a bit more, a bit easier to collaborate yeah, yeah. than it used to be when we had to post things via the, with paper. Um, I, I personally um, am, how do I say, uh, I still use a fountain pen and uh, <laughs> I still like my paper. <laughs> you know, I still use the paper dictionary and the paper. But uh, Yeah, me too, me too, yes, yes. But I'm That's from the old school of Synology that is dying very rapidly. <laughs> um, and I, I have to confess that I'm collecting uh, little annotations on, I, I use paper to I collect, I write down there's a book where I found it, something, and then I look at the internet and say, oh, I have that book, it's <laughs> right behind me, and beautiful. <laughs> yes. But um, we, we need both, yes, not only internet, and, and some young uh, people don't even know to, uh, to, to use internet, so just work with, with, uh, with uh, mobiles. So, so yeah. we are still, with the internet, old-fashioned internet. Mm -hmm. Well, Professor von Kolani, we, we are just now at about 30 minutes, which is just right. So uh, let, me, uh, let me say thank you. And let me also uh, take this opportunity. You know, so often, uh, so often we scholars cite other scholars. Uh, your own work has been cited in, in my own work. And uh, rarely do we have an opportunity to say thank you in person. So I should say in person, thank you for your contribution and thank you for your work. And I know many of us are looking forward to uh, con the continued volumes of, of Acta Pecanensia and your other work. But let me say thank you and, uh, on how, and let me stress how much other scholars in the field have appreciated uh, your work and your voice. I would also like to thank you. <laughs> For the Clark, uh, for the interview and for uh, your work, I've bought recently. I've bought a book written by you about Franciscans and the boxer, boxers, and but I didn't not yet. I could not read. read. There are many good books now, but it's. Yeah. So I, I would like to see it. And, I fear yeah. that uh, as an American scholar, it may be a bit of an overview. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hopefully. hopefully a good one. Yeah, yeah. Well, Professor Von Kalani, thank you so much.